Hi, Morris here. And today I want to take you through a critical aspect of taking the SAT. How should you deal with time issues? Some kids don't get to enough questions. Or maybe you're spending too much time on questions that are too difficult and not enough time on easy questions. So what's the best way to spend that limited time that you get to maximize your score? watch that sits right next to you. Not every test location has the best clock. Some of them will have a digital clock on the side of the wall over there. Maybe the clock will be behind you. Maybe the clock is the, one of those clocks, you know, with the minute hands. I'm not good at telling time on those hands. I can't even remember. Do I have 20 minutes left? And what will then happen is that you'll just spend your time aimlessly without having a plan. So what I need you to do is get a watch that approves with the SAT standards. I did the research. I'm going to put those SAT standards up on the screen right now. And you'll see that the two most important things are that it can't be a timer. It needs to be a watch that has a timer. And also it can't make a beeping sound. So actually, I found the watch for you. I'm going to throw that Amazon link down below. I don't get any uh, commission or anything like that. But you're going to want to pick up that watch. And I'm going to show you how we could use that incredible watch. For our strategy. So let's start with section one, reading comprehension. 65 minutes, 52 questions, five passages. You want to allocate 13 minutes per passage. Now, in reading, the questions don't go in order of easiest to hardest. So if you simply just do the beginning and don't get to the end questions, you're going to leave some easy ones that you would have gotten if you had time on the table and you're going to spend time on the wrong questions. So you want to allocate 13 minutes per passage. So your watch, when it says 13, you want to move on to the second passage. When it says 26, on to the third passage. When it says 39, 52, and then 65 will be the end. Now, within the passage, you want to spend four to five minutes reading the passage. You don't want to spend too much time. You don't get any points for reading the passage. But you also don't want to spend too little time that you don't comprehend it. You want to spend just right, maybe four to four and a half minutes is really ideal. Then you want to get to the questions. Now what I like to do with the questions is first do a run through and get the questions that are easiest for me. So I start from the beginning. I'm constantly eliminating wrong choices. And for the ones that I don't know, I'm putting a star. For the ones that I do know, I'm circling them and guessing them. Then after doing that for seven minutes, now we're at the 11 minute mark, the 11 and a half minute mark. Then I go back to the beginning. I review and enter them into my bubble sheet. And then I take a stab at the ones that I wasn't so sure. And the reason why this is so beneficial is because that way I get to see them with fresh eyes. I don't spend too much time on a question that I don't know. At the 13 minute mark, I move on to the next passage and so on and so on. Now, some people want to do this strategy. Oh, maybe I just won't read the passages. Now, nah, that's a bad strategy. The new SAT asks tons of main idea questions, primary purposes of paragraphs that really force you to actually read and understand the passages. Section two is grammar. 44 questions in 35 minutes, much less than reading comprehension, but the passages are easier. You want to move quickly. You want to move efficiently. Some people don't like reading the passage. They just want to skip to the grammar question. Again, then you're going to get the relevant information questions wrong. You're going to get the main idea questions wrong. So read it. Read it quickly. And again, the easiest questions could be last. Don't spend too much time on questions that you don't think that you're going to get right. And then... This is general strategy for reading and grammar. The way to get faster is to work quickly and to work on your focus. Focus is a muscle. At first, every minute you're going to be spacing out and thinking about something else. Practice it. You'll see. And slowly you'll build up that muscle. You'll be engaged more of the time and that way you'll have more time. In regards to math, the strategy is going to be a bit different. Because in math, the questions are ordered in order from easiest to hardest. So you know where you want to spend your time. There's no reason for you to be spending five minutes on one hard question and then not having enough time to answer four easier ones that you could have done in the same time. So let's take it from section three. You have 25 minutes for 15 multiple choice and five griddens, 20 questions in total. So spend your first 15 minutes on the 15 multiple choice. Those go from easiest to hardest. The next seven or eight minutes you should spend on the griddens because the griddens go all the way back to easiest. So question number 16 on the griddens is actually as easy as question number one on the test. 
So there's no reason for you to be spending tons of time on 13, 14, and 15 and not getting to 16, 17, and 18 that are so much easier. 15 minutes on the multiple choice, seven minutes on the grid-in, and then when you finish the grid-ins and also on the grid-ins, if you don't get them, you get zero points, whereas on the multiple choice, you still have a 25% chance of guessing them. So when you finish the grid-ins, then go back to the multiple choice, fill in your last guesses, do any question that you felt like you almost had a shot at. Section four, again, press start on your watch. You have 55 minutes for 38 questions, 30 multiple choice, spend your first 35 minutes on those. Again, easier ones in the beginning. In the end, they could get harder. If those are ones that you can get right and quickly, then of course, by all means, go get them. But depending on what score you're around, you'll know if you could get those or you can't. Then, at the 35 minute mark, go to the grid-ins because those, again, go back to easiest. So question 31 is so easy. No reason for you to spend tons of time on question 29 and 30 and not get to 31, 32, 33, 34. Very easy and gettable questions. So do those 12 minutes for those eight grid-ins. And then you have another eight minutes to go back, finish up, guess anything that you want. Keep track of where you are on the watch. Have a plan of how you're going to use your time. Practice it on diagnostic tests. Execute it. Raise your score.